Hi, this is Jabari Parker. Make sure y'all check out the three-point conversion. Hey, Gordon, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. We are going to get started here. Um, guys, if you have any questions, please use the raise hand function, and I will call on you. We'll start with Nick Carboni. Gordon, how did this most recent hand injury uh, relate to the previous one, and uh, what have you kind of done to, to get yourself back to where you're probable for tonight? Um, I mean, it's the exact same uh, spot as the first one from the preseason. So that's, and I aggravated it in Utah. Um, and then, you know, played in the next two games and pretty much made it worse. Um, aggravated it in a couple new spots as well. So it's just all, all together was not a, you know, great situation, especially it's being my right hand felt like I couldn't really do what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I think it's, we, we looked at everything and there's nothing you know, that, that would require anything but rest, basically time kind of, I mean, we've been doing treatment and stuff. So um, it's still definitely sore, but, you know, um, you know, plan on playing tonight on it. Sam Parley. Hey, Gordon. Um, I know, I think you missed the last two games. Just what were your kind of takes on how the team and the young guys have responded? I think you were down to about eight or nine players and how they kind of stepped up. I know you guys are dealing with a lot of injuries and absences right now, but what did you think of the team's play? kind of in through a really tough time right now. Yeah, no, I think we've been we've been fighting and we've done that all year with different guys being out from injuries. Um, you know, the, the, the win that we had was was an unbelievable victory um, where countless countless guys were making plays for us all night, just battling and uh, certainly just um, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's been the spirit of the team, just competing, grinding it, grinding it out, trying to fight through it. Thank you. Rick Bunnell. Hey, Gordon, this is kind of a big picture vet question. Um, we were talking to JB the other day about dealing with this incredibly, you know, this second half schedule is just going to be flooded with games. I thought it was interesting that he said, you know, he's going to have to really peel back any idea, not only of practices, but even really extended film sessions. I, I thought it was interesting when he said, if anything, I need to simplify what they're doing as opposed to adding things and, and, and doing, spending a whole lot of time taxing people's heads with a whole lot of changes and corrections. As somebody who's been through some long playoff runs and such, what do you think of sort of striking the balance between you know, keeping you guys mentally and physically fresh versus correcting things as they come up? Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, certainly that there, there, there are things that need to be corrected and will be corrected and he'll address those. And, you know, I think other times it'll be um, maybe done more individually if, if need be, I, I'm assuming. Um, it's, it is, there, there is definitely a balance. Uh, I, I think this season, obviously, unlike any other I've ever been a part of. So, um, I mean, the last time uh, I feel like something similar like this happened was my second year when we had a lockout. And so it was like a shortened season and a condensed season. And we had back to back to backs in that in uh, that season. And so it was a lot of games for sure. But this is going to be, you know, no doubt a gauntlet and something that we're all going to have to try to be as fresh as we can. Um, try to stay, you know, mentally and physically prepared and just certainly more than ever, you know, on to the next game, whether it's a victory or a defeat, you know, there's no, there's definitely no time to, to, to dwell about the last one, try to learn from it and then move on. When, when you say the hardest season and, you know, other people have talked somewhat about that, you know, like Kerry was talking about the added complication of getting testing on game days, throwing off sleep patterns and such, what sort of things have happened that have made this particularly, you know, hard to manage? As a whole? Yeah. Yeah. Just, I just wondered like some examples of, yeah. boy, this is not a typical season. Yeah. I mean, I think I've talked about it before, but certainly the night testing is, is something that's draining um, mentally and physically. I mean, the, 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 
after, you know, going to the arena and, you know, physically and mentally, you know, getting your work in, the last thing you want to do is go back to the arena. It's nice to be able to spend time with family and kind of get away from the game a little bit, but we're having to go back and doing the night testing um, on the, on the early game that we had going back at 11 o'clock was certainly unique. Um, and then, um, I think Terry's right too on, on the road game days, uh, doing the morning testing, waking up and doing it basically regardless of whether or not you got something going on. Um, I mean, it all adds up. I think also just sometimes not knowing whether or not you're going to play the game. I think the last time we played in Minnesota, I think it was Minnesota, right? The one where we, we almost didn't play. Yep. Um, I mean, I mean, that's like, that's crazy. I mean, we're sitting there in the parking lot, basically 60 minutes before the game, like, what are we doing? Are we playing? Are we not playing? I mean, guys have routines and um, certainly mentally it's trying to get your mind wrapped around. Are we playing? What are, like what, what's going on? Different things like that. Guys in and out of the lineup because of COVID teams that you're playing with different guys in and out of the lineup. Um, I mean, it all certainly adds up. I think everyone is sacrificing not, not having fans too changes things. I mean, fans, fans give you a big, big boost of energy. Um, especially when it's, you feel like, uh, you know, you're, there, there's a lot of games going on and you feel like, okay, here we go with another game. And then the fans kind of pick you up and give you that boost sometimes that you need. And th that, that's not there either. So there's just a lot that's going on in the season. And I think guys are doing a good job of getting, you know, trying to find ways to, to pick themselves up and get going. Certainly we're gonna have to do that even more in the second half of the season. Thank you. Appreciate it. Jacob Rood. Hey, Gordon. After the uh, Portland game the other night, we talked to Terry. It seems like things are really clicking for LaMelo on this road trip. What's the, he, he mentioned just kind of the mental aspect being the the biggest difference from the beginning of the season in LaMelo. I mean, is that, what have you noticed just as the biggest difference in him from kind of game one to where we are now? I think experience plays a lot into that. I think he'll continue to get more comfortable on the court and, and be better. Um, you know, I think the, over the years too, you'll see that certainly improve the experience part with decision-making, you know, when to push it, when to hold back, that that's kind of, you start to figure out, especially, you know, for him being a point guard, you start to figure out how to really run a, a team um, and he'll get there. No doubt. Um, like you said, he's been playing at an extremely high level on this road trip. And we need him to with, with all the injuries and everything that's been going on. Um, you know, so I think he's certainly coming into his own and um, it's, it's, it's fun to watch. Thank you. Richie. Hey, Gordon. Um, you've been pretty effective on all levels of the court this season, but you seem to favor that elbow high post area. What is it about your game or why do you feel that you're so good in the middle of the court? Um. I just have been in those areas a lot over the, my course of my career. So I'm just comfortable doing that. Um, you know, I need to figure out ways where I can probably, you know, spread it out to the three point line a little bit more. Um, but for me, that's just the spot that I'm comfortable is thousands and thousands of reps, honestly. And a quick, a quick follow up um, in terms of leadership this year, uh, do you feel like you've been more vocal this season versus any previous season you've ever been a part of? Um, there's been times where I've been uh, more vocal for sure. Uh, I think it's something I still need to do a better job of. I mean, I'm never going to be um, the, the most vocal guy on a team. It's just not my personality, but certainly, um, you know, when I feel like I have things that need to be said, I, I say them and, um, you know, we do have a lot of young guys. So I feel like there's, there's stuff that I can, I can help out with. Thank you. Danny Thompson. Gordon, Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion. You mentioned fans earlier. Uh, it, the announcement came today that there's going to be about 3,000 fans uh, starting when you guys get back in the second half of the season. Knowing that you guys are in the middle of a playoff run, how important is it for the fans to pack the building every night in the second half of the season for you guys? I didn't, I didn't know that, so that's awesome to hear. Um you know, we'll take as many fans as we can get, as many Charlotte Hornets fans as we can get in there. Um, and yeah, like, I mean, I, I said it, I mean, we need the fans. Um, 
the fans give us energy. They give us juice sometimes when we don't when we don't have it ourselves. And uh, that, that'll be fun, man. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be the first time I've, I've played in, you know, in front of the home Charlotte's crowd. So it'll be good. Alrighty, thank you so much, Gordon. Thanks, guys.